Football is our religion. The One Course Stadium is our church. Nigel Clough is the God we choose to believe in. By name, I am your priest. And this week, it's Ollie Hawkins who gets us on our feet and believing firmly in project promotion. Matty Longstaff will deliver Mansfield's second corner of the game then here at uh, One Course Stadium. Up steps Longstaff. Two step run up into three. And post Hawkins. And it's in. It's in. It's Get in. The Get line. in. Mansfield Town have scored. It's Ollie Hawkins who swoops in and knocks in the opening goal of the game on 20 minutes. Mansfield Town 1. Northampton Town 0. Brilliant. Brilliant delivery. And Hawkins. I think one of the lads, I think I don't know if it was Quinn who got a block on his on his marker and left him with a free header. And it's a great header, you know, the keeper nearly got it tipped in, but but that's all come from Mansfield play, keeping the ball, breaking the line and creating something. And that's what they can do. And it's a fantastic header from Hawkins and a great start from the Stags. That goal on 20 minutes puts the Stags into six, but level on points with third place Port Vale with a game in hand over the Valiants. It also sets things up nicely as the big week of fixtures continues with a trip to league leaders Forest Green on Tuesday, followed by the league's bottom side Scunthorpe United on Saturday. But as Nigel Clough rightly says, any supporter thinking three points are already ours at Scunthorpe needs to think again. We'll take an unbelievably good following and everyone will think it's three points before three o'clock, never is. It'll be incredible, you know, they're almost down and they'll relax and play and be very dangerous. But Forest Greener, so they got the three points today, they'll be thinking let's get it done sooner rather than later. You know, we've got seven games left, I think they need to win three or four or something like that and they'll want to get one of those on, on Tuesday. Tonight on the Sunday Sermon we'll reflect on Clough's comments as we desperately try to keep our expectations suppressed. We'll also look back on yesterday's 1-0 win over Northampton Town. Plus, we'll preview Tuesday's trip to Forest Green Rovers and lots more in between, including another discount code for Stags Stories Live. As always, get involved in the comments and have your say on your team. This is the show for the fans, by the fans. This is the Mansfield Matters Podcast and this is the Sunday Sermon. Ladies and gentlemen, be seated. It's time to get it underway. It's only goal difference which separates Mansfield Town from being further up the table. Port Vale in third on 66 points on a plus 22 goal difference. Northampton in fourth on plus 13. Uh, Bristol Rovers in fifth on plus 11 and the Stags in sixth on plus 10. The Stags maybe could have had more contributed to that goal difference if it wasn't for the Northampton goalkeeper who had an excellent game between the sticks for the Cobblers. More on him a little bit later on. But first, let's meet the people who are talking all things Mansfield Town again. Hello and welcome, by the way, to the Mansfield Matters podcast and, of course, the Sunday Sermon. Joining me to chat all things Mansfield Town tonight, the usual suspects, the man who was absent from One Call Stadium yesterday um, as he's still struck down with the old COVID and the old croak. And that's not uh, just what we call him around the uh, the uh, the green room anyway. It's Mr Alan Wilson. Good evening, mate. You feeling better? Good evening, uh, Craig, and good evening, everybody. Still croaky, but getting there. Thank you. Slowly but surely. And also joining me as well, Clive Parkins there as well. Evening, my friends. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Craig. And welcome to the Mansfield Matters podcast. As always, we want you to get involved and have your say on your team. No Nathan is yet. He might pop on later on, although we've got a sneaking feeling that he might not pop on tonight, having scored absolutely nothing in this week's podcast predictions. Get in. It's more, that's more of a win than Ollie Hawkins' header, to be honest. And, uh, of course, uh, Cam's not with us. He's doing his usual Sunday thing, which is, I believe this week he's given up on Hollyoaks and he, he's so saddened by the end of Holby City that he's decided to watch the entire box set from the very first episode, what, 20 odd years ago, something like that. So uh, we won't be seeing him uh, for a while. We, we probably will when we win in midweek. But anyway, uh, moving swiftly on, let's go to uh, uh, your comments. Keep them coming in as always. Let you have your say on your team. We'll come to them in just a second. First though, Alan, you were absent from yesterday's game, which meant some Somebody else had to announce uh, Ollie Hawkins as the goal scorer. I know, though, you were glued to your radio sets and listening. Were you up and jumping out your chair when Ollie Hawkins' bullet header went in? I certainly was, Craig. I was very happy. I have to say, Chris Revel was very good. 
He, he usually is very good, Chris is. We like take it in turns. He does my job if I can't get, and I do his job in the sponsors' lounge if uh, Chris can't get. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely the right person for the sponsors' lounge, though, isn't he? Why? Yes. <laughs> it's only leftover food, he has it. <laughs> I'll say this because he's a friend, by the way. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right, let's move swiftly on and uh, get Clive out of that deep hole that he's digging and uh, go to the actual game yesterday, Alan. Obviously a 1-0 win, but uh, as you'll have known from listening to uh, yours truly on the old wireless, could have been way more because their goalkeeper, well, he got in team of the week and, uh, you know, he's kept a number of clean sheets for them this season. You can absolutely see why. I'd say along with Nathan Bishop, he's one of the best goalkeepers I've seen in League Two. I would definitely agree with that, yes. And it also, from uh, there, somebody put on, I don't know whether it was our website or theirs today, that uh, is uh, not got a contract for next season. That could be interesting. I'd yeah. be surprised at that if he hasn't. My, I suppose it all depends whether they go up or whether they stay in League 2 or not, doesn't it? Very, very true. I'm not sure if he was with them last year when they got relegated. If so, he might be trying to get back into League 1 like a lot of clubs. Anyway, let's delve into... Um, some of your comments, as always, Stuart's kicked us off tonight. It says, let's keep that momentum going into Tuesday and Saturday, maybe even tougher than Tuesday. But yeah, great place to be in at the moment. Come on, you stags. Jim says, please, please, please on Tuesday, play a back four, the same back four and go on attack. We don't do parking the bus and Forest Green are definitely soft underbellied if you have a go at them. Yeah, we'll talk about Forest Green a little bit more later on. But as much as Jim's calling for the same back four there, Clive, if James Perch is fit, James Perch will play. Yeah, it's a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? Who do you take out to put Perch in? It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, Maka has been playing with a bit of an injury. Played well on uh, on Saturday, but when you've got games coming thick and fast like we have, and Perch can fill in that position and do equally well, as long as he's got somebody with a natural left foot in front of him, I think he will be all right. So for me, I think it's almost a, it's almost a straight swap, or depending on the fitness of, of Reese Oates, you then move Hawkins back up top and go with Perch at centre-back alongside uh, Mr O'Toole. Yeah, I've been one of those people that from time to time have been pleading to have Hawks relieved of his defensive duties to put him on a, in his chosen profession. However, he's been playing so well. Um, he made a couple of mistakes the other week, but um, yesterday he was spot on in his defensive duties and the goal was a bonus. But uh, no, he didn't miss much at the back at all against a very strong attacking team. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it really is a, a quandary to have. Like uh, Clive said there, Alan, on Tuesday night at uh, Hartlepool, he was at fault for at least one of the goals, the second goal, I believe, where he sort of gave the ball away and they went and scored uh, from it. But yesterday, he won every single header going. He really, really put a shift in and uh, deserves his place in the EFL Team of the Week as well. When I was listening to it yesterday, Craig, it just reminded me, going back quite a few years, because every time, you know, they were saying about, he do, he's done this, he's got the ball away, he's headed it away, he's moved nicely, he's kicked the ball up front and everything. It reminded me very much of George Foster, to be honest. A little bit of a reference, which is over my head, to be honest, but we'll... Uh... <laughs> I could I I ju I I just remember it. <laughs> Absolute class. There we go. That's what we needed. Uh, Can I just say, going back to him, though, I mean, the, the weakness I think he has is if, if uh, uh, the attackers loop one over his head because he hasn't got a, a, the pace mm. to compete with the guy that's running for it. And that's that's there was one in the game uh, early on where it was, it was completely out, outrun. Um, and, of course, he's, he turns like a tanker anyway. So, uh, you know, he's not the quickest player on the field. And sometimes that is a weakness. But if he's good enough, and preempts most attacking play, it's fine. I have but to that... say, that's that's the only thing which worries me sometimes. We get long balls punted in behind us and the entirety of the back four, um, sometimes more, more so on the left-hand side, step up a little bit too early and let players get goal side. We got away with it yesterday. Yeah, but of the back four is the least mobile, isn't it? Mm, yeah. I think you know. I think he knows that as well. But you know, he's got the height to go and win the headers, and, and that's the important thing. Yesterday, we 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 got it right. Sometimes, you know, his passing or his clearances aren't always up to standard. And what you need is you need your midfield, Alan, to come and step in and to come and win those balls. And Matty Longstaff, Stephen Quinn, um, you know, George Lapsley, Ryan Sturk, all phenomenal in in that yesterday, and really, really pleased. And Stephen Quinn was playing like a sixteen year old. He had energy and enthusiasm to burn. But by the sound of it, Clay, Craig, he was 
playing where I like him to play on the left hand side in front of Maka or yeah. Perchy, whoever plays there. It was Maka yesterday, and that's his preferred. That's my preferred position for him. I think when he goes into midfield, you know, into the middle of the uh, center of the midfield, I think he gets a bit lost and he gets a bit bypassed, where he can do more damage from the left hand side with Maka intermingling with Sturk and Barry or whoever's in front of him, you know, and he he just seems to have a better game in my opinion. Sean says, is this our year? Well, we'll find out in what? Uh, eight games time? Yeah. Uh, no point. I don't think there's any point in sitting here and going, yes, it is, or, or no, it's not at, at this point, because it's so tight in that league table, isn't it? I mean, at one point, we were fourth just behind uh, just behind Northampton, who, who'd who stayed in, uh, in, in third. But then I think Port Vale got a goal and it swung. And it just shows, Clive, doesn't it, that uh, it's, you know, this way or that way. We've got a, one of our games in hand at the moment. We've got... Everybody in the playoffs, um, so it's Northampton, Bristol Rovers and Tranmere other than ourselves, and then Newport just outside the playoffs. They've played 40 games. We've got a game in hand on every one of those teams, and that comes on Tuesday night. The only team we haven't got a game in hand on uh, in the rounders on Tuesday night is Port Vale, who've got a game, I believe, away at Salford. I might be wrong, but yeah, I know they definitely play, play on Tuesday Salford, night. Yeah. yeah, Salford away on Tuesday night, which, again, it's a team almost in and around us because they're in they're in night they're on 62 um so you know they can't Salford can't catch us but at, at the minute on in that one game should they win but uh it's a vital vital time to start uh you know making the most Clive of those gaming hands yes it'll be a big, big ask against the Forest Green side who are top of the table but it's still uh it, it's it's still needed and it's still very much uh uh, an, an option for us to, to go and try and punish those teams. Yeah, every game we need to aim to win it. Um, there is no question about that. We don't need to win them all, but we need to try to win them all. And we need to assume we're going to win each game as it comes along, even against Forest Green Rovers. And I think, you know, on our day, we're a, we're a match for anybody. And that's what we've got to look for on Tuesday. Um, but, you know, then following that with bottom of the league, and I don't think that's going to be much of a gimme either. I think there's going to be, uh, uh, I mean, in fact, Forest Green only got one pass, and didn't they, on uh, Saturday? Mm. So I think, you know, the, whilst I think they've, they've lost their league status pretty much, they're battling, um, whether it's pride or whether it's for contracts, I don't know. But uh, either way, um, I don't expect us to go there mob-handed and roll them over. I think we'll <clears> have to work for it. No, Nigel Clough was very, very insistent that we need to uh, to not be complacent going into that one. I'm sure he'll be even more so um, on Tuesday night after I speak to him after the uh, the Forest Green Rovers game. Keep your comments coming in. Have your sound yesterday. Have a little look ahead to Forest Green as well um, in there as well. Um, Adrian Keita, a friend of the podcast, of course, says, fantastic Hawkins header. What a win and what a team. What a uh, header it was indeed. And it sparked us to do a little bit of uh, cheeky promotion. You've got until 7.45, that's kickoff on Tuesday, to use the link in the description to get yourself a free ticket for Stags Stories Live. I'm feeling generous. I'm going to subsidise the cost of any tickets that are, that have that are got using the code Hawkins12 between now and 7.45 on Tuesday night. So... Use the link in the description for Stag Stories Live, 22nd of April at One Call Stadium with Stuart Watkins, Neil Richardson and guests and use the code HAWKINS12 at checkout and you'll get 100% off. More on that later. Let's come back to some more uh, comments. Uh, Craig says, Hawkins up top and Perch at centre-back with JJ is what I do if Oates misses Tuesday. Hand on heart, Alan. Um, I can't see Reese Oates playing on Tuesday. Nigel Clough sort of alluded to it in his post-match um, interview anyway, which is basically um, that uh, it, it'd probably been rest anyway because of the knocks and niggles at, at this time in the campaign. And he was struggling in the first half, got himself through to, to half time, and carried on in the second half and, and probably, in retrospect, almost like the Jamie Murphy situation in midweek at, at Hartlepool, probably should have gone off at half time. Yeah, because we've got the stand-ins, haven't we, Craig? I mean, I know it was an important mm. game yesterday and we were 1-0 up and we wanted to keep that uh, score, if not go on and get a few more, you know, apart <laughs> from their goalkeeper, which we probably would have done. But we have got players waiting in the wings who can do a job. We've got Barry, we've got Johnson, who must be absolutely chomping at the bit to get on. Admitted, he's not the same sort of player as Oates, but we won't know what he's got until we give him a chance. And this might be the ideal scenario. 
Yeah, you know, never know. He could come in towards the back end of the season and, you know, score four in four or whatever and, and, and get that vital goal to um, to push us on, which would be uh, just exactly what we're, what we're looking for. Chris says, even their keeper deserves a mention. He was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. He was. We mentioned that a little bit. Uh, Daniel uh, laugh, laughs and says, can we sack Cam now that he's got that dreadful um, shirt on uh, the profile picture that he's uh, on, had recently on Facebook? He's been warned. He's been yellow carded. And bless him, he's, you know, he's just starting out in his career and he's got this opportunity um, and he's obviously passionate about it, but not as passionate as about Mansfield Town. Don't you worry about that. He's been booked, he's been reprimanded and he assures me it won't happen again. And can can I also say, Craig, that the Chesterfield women's football team have disassociated themselves? I was the trying team. to avoid the word, the word that you just said there, Clive, to be honest. Disassociated themselves from the team, from the main team over the motorway there and they've become now... Ladies of the town, I can't mention. Yes. And therefore, independent of the professional football club of the town, I can't mention. So therefore, Cam is not as guilty of treason as he once was. No, but he's, yes, he's still got a yellow card and a reprimand, Daniel. Don't you worry about that. Let's more, move back to more Mansfield matters because Mansfield, believe it or not, does matter. Uh, Jim says, no goal in open play in eight hours with that back four. Yeah, I suppose you can uh, look at that. I mean, I don't know whether... Is, is that an exact stat on that exact back four of Hewitt, O'Toole, Hawkins and McLaughlin? Or... It can't be because Purchase played on several games in that time. Yeah, exactly. In, I don't know. It's If you're saying it, the back four is, is much more tight than, than the alternatives, I wouldn't disagree with him. Yeah. I mean, it might well be a, a true fact with that back four. If you could clarify, Jim, in the comments, that'd be, uh, that'd be great. Um, are we talking specifically about Hewitt, O'Toole, Hawkins, McLaughlin? If so, um, then 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 great. But if if that in includes perch, if if it's a more general back four, then obviously uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, Tom says uh, George Lapsley is like a new signing. Now he's up to speed. He looks incredible, uh, coming good at the right time. Clive, you nodding away at that one? Yeah, it was my man of the match. I know Hawkins had a great game, but uh, Lapsley, he's back. Yeah, he's uh, he, he really looks sharp and looks to be enjoying his football, Alan, as well, doesn't he? He does. He played well on Tuesday night as well, didn't he? He was all over the place. And since he has come back and got those couple of goals, he's looking more like the old play, uh, the player of old that we, we saw before he got injured. And he's, I think he's getting a little bit of a free run as well, or he seems to be, just yeah. in front of the midfield. You know, it's like, a, did, did they call it the old number 10 mm. or whatever you want to call it? You know, in between the forwards and the midfield. And it seems to be... You know, he's generally all over the place. I know he is anyway, but the the amount of tackles he gets in is same as Quinny. I just think he's, he's awesome when he's uh, on his day. What I really like about us at the minute, Clive, is the, is the licence that Lapsley and Longstaff seem to have. They really do interchange quite well. There's a good little bit of running in there. And we've got this real solidified back line which doesn't seem to change and sort of keeps it as it is but at the other at the other end we've got a really really fluid front line if one goes forward if if Lapsley pushes forward for example Aikens will come and sit in if Quinn drops wide Stirk will go and push up and hold in and Longstaff will drop back and vice versa everybody just sort of seems to move around together and, and keep compact it's like having that elastic band we stretch but what we do is we know our limitations. Yeah, I think every player that we, we are currently using now, all the players in the squad who are fit to be chosen, they, they're all very, very well suited now. And I think they uh, they degree they have a degree of flexibility which enables the, the shape of the team to alter it to accordingly to the opposition. And I think yesterday, Lapsy was given more room both by both teams and he, he, he exploited it. And I think that's that's good. I know, you know, a, a word about uh, um, Aikens. Aikens needs a bit of luck, to be quite honest, because his end product seems to be lacking. But he he makes space. He finds space that no one else is finding. And he drags two defenders with him wherever he goes. Yeah. You know, you've got to give the lad credit for that. He looks like he's not doing anything. But in actual fact, if you watch him, his, his contribution to the game is immense. Yeah, Lucas Aikens in the last two games has transformed the way our forward line can play because like Clive says, Alan, he drags players one way, he drags them the other. The only thing he doesn't get, and this is what, you know, where League Two standard refereeing comes and he doesn't get fouls. He's not, I'm not saying that he's not being fouled or not going in for fouls. He's getting fouled, pushed and, and shoved quite a lot. But the referees, because of his size, you know, think it, it's fair game and uh, maybe he just needs to take a little... Uh, 
DR tablet and uh, have some <laughs> of that just, flower, flower seed sprinkled on him, and it will be, uh, yeah, it, it will be uh, a, a part of his game that he can uh, blossom, shall we say. And if the Fair referees play. are going to call him for fouling, then he may as well do a decent foul and hurt the buggers. <laughs> Fair play to him, though, because he does tend to, you know, he doesn't go down, does he? He's a big, strong fella, he's a big unit, and he stays on his feet. But like you said, you know, he does get fouled quite a lot. But because of his size and his stature, it, half of the time he manages to stand on his feet. But I agree with Clive and what uh, the comments were saying yesterday after the match about he does need a goal because his confidence would be sky high then. We might see an even better player than what we see now. As long as someone's putting the ball in the back of the net, couldn't care less. Uh, Aikens is a strong player in League Two, says Roger. His time will come for goals. Get stuck in. <laughs> yeah. I think that's my point. I think he needs to be a bit... Naughtier. <laughs> he's a big lad. He wants to be felt a bit more. I think that's that's my view. He's, he's an honest fellow, though, isn't he? And I think he you, can, you yeah. can certainly see why he's played in every outfield position because he's got the honesty and integrity about him. And he knows how to play people. Yeah, he's got an intelligent head. No question about that. Uh, but you're right. He's a big unit. He should be uh, dominating those one to ones when he's in them. And just occasionally he gets out, he gets out running, and that's the danger with a big fella, isn't it? That if you've got a whip it against you, you've got to, got to adopt a slightly different strategy. But I think he's had two really good games back to back, and and, and uh, I can't understand why people feel it is worthy of criticism. But that's that's for individuals to say, and others to either agree or disagree with. That's the part and parcel of football. Roger says an incredible second half on Saturday. It should have been more than one with some incredible stops uh, from Northampton. Uh, yeah, that could be said in the first half as well. The keeper makes a ridiculous save from Matty Longstaff's one right on the stroke of half time. That was going postage stamp uh, top corner. And then uh, 30 seconds later, he makes one, I think, from Reese Oates as well, which is a really good reflex save down to his... Uh, right-hand side. Uh, Roger also adds Quinn had a good game as well, a vital player. And one thing I was going to say as, as well, you know, um, oh, Hawkins got man of the match. Um, who did you say was your man of the match, Clive? Lapsley. Lapsley. Um, mine, Alan, was actually Stephen Quinn. There was a particular moment in the game, and I put this to Nigel Clough afterwards, where his experience really, really showed. We're under pressure. They've got 10 men. They're throwing literally everything at us. We're defending for our lives. We're one goal up, not long to go. Many defender would, as the ball comes down, would just absolutely bop it out as far down the, the, the field as they can and it would come straight back to us. Quinn watches it, he realises he's got time, he brings it down, he controls it, he holds off two, allows two of our players to bomb forward and he puts the ball forward and all of a sudden we're on the attack. It's that experience in those one or two percents which change games for you. That's what gets you over the line. Yeah, but from what, well, like we say, we've all got different opinions. And from what I heard of the game, I would have given it Hawkins because he just sounded like a colossus. That was me point to make him like George Foster because mm. George Foster was the ultimate colossus, in my opinion. Mm, absolutely. Uh, keep your comments coming in. Have your say on the game yesterday. Time to hear from a little bit of Nigel Clough. Not the full thing, because if you want to watch the full thing, it's on iFollow. Um, and there's an interview with... Uh, George Lapsley on there as well. But first and foremost, let's wrap up things on uh, all things uh, Northampton Town before we look ahead to uh, Forest Green, etc., etc. by hearing some post-match reaction from the Stags boss himself, Nigel Clough, speaking to me for I Follow Stags and Mansfield 103.2. Performance certainly warranted the three points today. I thought it was uh, against one of the top teams in the league. I thought we were outstanding from start to finish. Uh, a lot of good individual performances today. Uh, made, up, made up the great team win. Yeah, and you could sense what it meant to the fans as well, because in the grand landscape of things, that could be a huge three points. Yeah, still lots to eight games still to go, uh, but it's nice to sort of get back into the top seven, uh, still with those games in hand. Yeah, and of course, we'll talk about the performance today. Let's talk about the performance at the back, uh, first and foremost. Ollie Hawkins won every single header, and he won the most important header of all in 20 minutes. He did, it's unusual, because they're obviously uh, known for being very dangerous from set plays, so it was nice to score uh, with one of our own. Uh, but how, uh, how we haven't scored another one after that, I think you just said, uh, down to their goalkeeper more than anything. It was a good corner for Matty Longstaff, uh, and just we put it in the, tried to put it in the right sort of areas, uh, and it's a brilliant header, uh, but no more than the rest of his performance today. Was that the response you wanted after Tuesday night? Because like we said, post-match on Tuesday, the performance was there, but the conviction not so much. But tonight, in, this afternoon, it, it really was to some degree. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't make any mistakes today. 
Uh, that's the key. Uh, we made a couple of little ones on Tuesday night and we were punished. Sometimes you, we said you get away with them. Uh, but tonight, today we didn't make any mistakes and I think Nathan Bishop was a, a spectator for, for much of the game and especially the second half. Yeah, and of course, uh, they finished the game with 10 men. What did you see of the instincts? It was pretty much right in front of the, the dugouts and there were some questionable calls this afternoon as well. Yeah, there was a few, yeah, uh, a few puzzling ones, uh, said, you know, especially in the, in the first half. But I just think I think he's given him two yellows, one for the tackle and one for the push. Yeah, that's what it looked like from where we were as well. And how does that change your mentality when you go down to ten men? Because we've seen it so often that sometimes when you're playing with a, a man less, you can actually raise your game a little bit. We had it ourselves, didn't we, up at Barrow? Definitely. Uh, and yeah, it's not an absolute certainty you're then going, going to go on and win the game. That's why we wanted the second goal, mm. and we were doing everything we could to get it. Got in some brilliant positions and situations today. And as I say. Their goalkeeper made a few outstanding saves and also they made a lot of blocks. There's a lot of little deflections that just went for corners, could have gone in the other corner and stuff. So we didn't get a break uh, today and just fortunate that we didn't need one. But you must take immense heart from your size defensive display today because resilient right until the last whistle. Yeah, I thought the back four were excellent. Um, we're missing uh, our main man out of that with James Perch with illness. Um, but it's lovely that I'm not sure who would have, uh, who would have missed out, but James Perch would have played today. Uh, but the four of them uh, and Bish when called upon uh, they're outstanding today Yeah absolutely we'll talk about those changes uh, in a little minute because Reece Oaks went off injured as well uh, today what's the latest with him? He's th- I just tightened up I'm going to go down and see him and, uh, and just see what he's, uh, what he's like uh, but this is why we're, we're sort of leaving, leaving him for a game here and there uh, we, we, we did it with Jamie Murphy and we should have done it on Tuesday night he's ended up with a uh, tight hamstring uh, and now we've got Oatsy with a, a tight thigh so I think they're both outs for Tuesday Nigel Clough speaking to me for I Follow Stags and Mansfield 103.2. If you want to watch that interview in full where he talks about those changes, looks ahead to Forest Green and much, much more in between, then make sure you head to mansfieldtown.net forward slash I Follow where you'll also see a post-match interview with George Lapsley as well. Uh, Ollie Hawkins then was the match winner on Saturday afternoon and his goal got me feeling all generous. And I've decided that between now... And 7.45 on Tuesday night when the Stags kick off at Forest Green Rovers. Anybody that uses the code HAWKINS12 on uh, the ticket link for our event, Stags Stories Live, I will subsidise that cost. So I'm going to take off 100% of uh, that cost. So essentially, you get a free ticket. So Stags Stories Live, what is it? I hear you ask. I mean... If you don't know by now, then where have you been? Friday, the 22nd of April, 2022. So three weeks, just less than three weeks time at One Course Stadium. Uh, us as Mansfield Matters will be hosting our Stag Story Series live in front of you guys, in front of an audience where former promotion winning manager Stuart Watkiss, uh, Neil Richardson, the former assistant manager and uh, guests will be with us for a very special live night indeed. Uh, we'll be recalling that promotion from 20 years ago, 20 years Uh, since we last got promoted out of this division within the Football League. So all of those stories, all of the the behind-the-scenes stuff um, as well, you'll be able to uh, see Stuart Watkiss, Neil Richardson and guests talk all about that. And if you go in the link in the description between now and 7.45 on Tuesday night and use the code HAWKINS12, all in capital letters, you'll get a free ticket for that event. So uh, HAWKINS12 is the code that you need. What's the code, Alan? Hawkins 12, all in capital letters. What is it, Clive? It's free. <laughs> yes, free. Using the code Hawkins 12. Right. I think we've uh, got, the so. that <laughs> we've got, the, got the life out of that one. Got the life out of that one. Moving swiftly on to other business. Of course, the Stags back on the road on Tuesday at Forest Green, as we say now. The club have subsidised coach travel for that one, which is a phenomenal gesture, which we'll talk about a little bit in a minute. If you want to get yourself a seat, I'm told that the remaining seats for those coaches are very, very sparse indeed. They have sold like rocking horse poo-poo. Clive has managed to bag one of the seats. Though you're going on Tuesday on the SSA, aren't you, Clive? Yeah, we were going anyway. I mean, it's just a bonus, the fact that the club's been able to uh, put the coaches on in a way that means that we don't have to pay again. But the, uh, I think it'll, it'll engender a good atmosphere. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game and I, have, I don't feel intimidated by it either. No, absolutely not. If you want to get yourself a seat on Tuesday night, the number you need to call is 07967 689 597. 
And That's of course, oh, oh, seven, nine, six, seven, six, eight, nine, five, nine, seven. That bit wasn't in the script. And if you want to go there on, uh, if you want to go on Saturday afternoons to the league's bottom side, Scunthorpe United, departure time from One Call Stadium is 11.45. Uh, this one will cost you though. However, it's just £10 for Amber members and junior members, £15 if you're a blue member or 20 quid if you are a non member. If you want to get yourself uh, on the bus for that one again, same number is 07967 689 597. 07967 689 597. And if you go in on Tuesday night, make sure you go and see Clive because they'll have something very special for you, which includes another one of those excellent discount codes, which you can use for Stag Stories Live. And if you book now between now and 745 on Tuesday and use the code Hawkins12, you'll bag yourself a free ticket. Right. Tick. Make, that's that that's that done. Let's talk all things Forest Green Rovers. Keep your comments uh, coming in. Want to hear uh, your say on your team. Let's start with that gesture from uh, the club, Alan. Then Nigel Clough said it in his post-match, actually, on back in that uh, Forest Green game, that um, you know, the club would look to support travel supporters going for the return trip. And uh, it's an excellent thing to do. It's brilliant uh, effort, isn't it? And, you know, he did, like you said, he said straight after the game, after the fog uh, abandonment and whatever. And you just can't fault them, can you? They're there every time for the fans, home or away. They're, they're just brilliant owners. And it's a really nice uh, gesture from either John and Carolyn or David or whoever's made it on behalf of the club. It's a fantastic gesture. Yeah, and uh, I think the important thing, Clive, as well, is it's it just shows the unity between the club because they know that getting the fans there on a Tuesday night is a big ask anyway, what with work commitments and, and things like that. But uh, Mansfield really does matter and doing little things like that just highlights the point. Oh, there's a wolf in the room. Alan's just turned the light on. He made his dog bark, bless you. You woke her up, didn't you, Al? Yeah. Better. Yeah, I think it's a trek under any circumstances to Nailsworth for, to see Forest Green Rovers. And when you get there, this bless all you can do but at the ground. It's a dreadful it's, it's, it's a dreadful place in terms of away fan hospitality. And I don't mean that on a personal level. I mean in terms of facilities. It's true. It's true. It's, there's nowhere for cover. If it rains on Tuesday night, we're all going to get drenched. Um, and uh, when you get there, there isn't a, a facility for people to have a bar, uh, go to a, to a bar and have a bite of proper food. And they don't even like um, the away support coaches getting up to the ground to, to disembark and to collect no. afterwards. Uh, I mean, it, it is awful. And I'm not suggesting it's all of their own making, but, you know, compared to most clubs where you go, there's, there's just, it's just poor. Yeah, it is. And that's a key point, you know, for I think some of it can be psychological sometimes because if away, if home clubs make it, you know, not a nice place for away supporters to come, especially on Tuesday nights, they'll be thinking, oh, I'm not fancying that. I just watch it on iFollow or whatever or listen to it on the radio. And that can be a big, big thing, can't it, Alan? And it's exactly the same at, at Forest Green. They've got a lovely little bar there, which we used to be get, able to go in all the time back when we were in the conference. Then when they got into the Football League, they whacked up this marquee in the in the car park, which they've subsequently taken down. It's literally, you're here, you're in, you freeze, and you can't even have a sausage roll. Yeah, it's... Uh, you it's know, when, used to, when I've uh, travelled away with the SSA before, that was always used to be the bare bone of contention. It used to be Forest Green Rovers away. Everybody used to call it, apparently, for the people, the elderly people who can't walk very far, don't they have to get a bus up the hill or something? Yeah, it is it's really poor, joke. that isn't That's really yeah. poor. Yeah, it is. And uh, the away end's not uh, great. There's a very small bit of seating which they've put in there um, now, but it's there's only around sort of maybe uh, 20, 30 seats in that little section. It's so. like a bus shelter. It is. and it, it is it's Right in the corner running. as well. Yeah. And then it's, uh, you know, open air terrace. And, well, I've been there when it oh, many a time. Actually, I think this is the, the the postponement on my birthday back in January was the second time I've been there and not seen the game through. The time before that, it absolutely smashed it down with rain. Shouldn't have even started. It got to half time. And then, of course, it had got to half time. Oh, shock horror. We had to pay for the return trip, which uh, I did pay for. And I, I don't believe, I don't think we got anything from the game either, which is uh, and you know, very, very annoying. Their, their average support is so modest mm. that they could very easily uh, use the goal 
behind uh, one of the stands behind the goals because they don't fill them. Well, they used uh, to. They used to be when we we're in the conference. It used to be the away and used to be behind the goal with the seats next to the uh, next to the tunnel. Oh no, I'm thinking of the other one would make more sense because it's nearer to the the road. But I mean, either way, yeah. they've got a goal be, a stand behind each goal. They're, they're quite small, but they don't. I mean, when you go to a game, I mean, the, the, when they played the other night, they've only got two thousand seven hundred there or whatever. They don't need all the, the the space they've got for the home support. I just think it's it's narrow minded if it's deliberate um, to to keep away fans in, especially in the height of winter, on that uh, open terrace. On a nice day, it's lovely. Don't get me wrong. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, it, for me, there'll be some rationale thinking behind it somewhere, but there's definitely an element of uh, bad sportsmanship in there some in, in some way, shape or form. Uh, anyway, let's go back to some more of your guys' comments. We'll talk about the game on the pitch uh, in a second. Jim says, a class gesture from the club. It must uh, be said, laying on free transport for us to go into Forest Green Rovers after the fog postponement. A fantastic owner who looks after his fans in a world where other clubs don't help their fans at all. Uh, Roger says, to say it was only 1-0 on Saturday, the game was very entertaining indeed. I think probably the most important win at this time of the season. A win's a win at the end of the day. Hawkins had a great game and uh, just made sure the ball always went forward head or foot. Um... Uh, Richard says, what's your team for Forest Green Rovers? It'd be an interesting one. Uh, he's gone for Bishop, Macca, JJ Hawkins and Hewitt. Maris, Lapsley, Quinn, Longstaff, Barry and Aikens. Um, I'm going to go for um, Bishop in goal, obviously. A back four of uh, Hewitt, uh, JJ Hawkins and Perch with a midfield of Maris, uh, Sturk, Quinn, uh, Lapsley in just behind Aikens and Bowery. I think will be uh, will be my my team. Um, obviously, I've left Stephen McLaughlin out of that. If he's fit and available to play, I would potentially put him in. But James Perch has got to go into that back four somewhere. And I just think with the left foot of Stephen Quinn potentially in there with uh, Maris back in the side as well, and, and Sturk backing him up. Is Maris fit? He is. Uh, he was on the bench, wasn't he, on uh, on Saturday? So he's uh, he's back available. Right. I just think he gives a bit more energy going down there. I mean, oh, I'm a big fan of Maris. I think when he's mm. unless he's having a bad game, obviously, and I don't like him at all. But uh, he uh, <laughs> typical football fan. Yeah. <laughs> he adds a dimension that you know we're missing when he's not there, and I think that's important. And, uh, and I think uh, he's, he's definitely worth um, a regular place in the starting eleven, in my opinion. Who would you? What would your lineup be, Alan? It'd be an interesting one, Craig. I think, uh, like yourself, if Mac was available, I would slot him in. And I, I personally, I would leave Perch on the bench. I would leave it as it was. The midfield, I would put Maris in, probably. And uh, maybe like Barry for Oates. So who are you taking out for Maris? Sturk? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Because he did look a bit tired at one point, I thought. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be a bit more radical in the front pairing, I think. I'd like time to bring the Danny out, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, probably keep Bowery on the bench. Yeah, I think Bowery's a good one to bring on, isn't he? And uh, I know you know, people get frustrated when he doesn't start, but uh, when he comes on, he adds that different dimension. You know, we brought him on yesterday after the, the red card and, and what have you, and uh, you know, he, we changed the shape a little bit and he really helped us out defensively um, as well. Roger says, still no Danny Johnson coming on late on. It's a very, it's an interesting one to make because Johnson's a, a, a certain type of player, isn't he? He's, he's more of a fox in the box. And to be honest, yesterday, had we been 11 v 11 and got a second goal, I think he might have come on. But we were 1 0 up against 10 men at home against a good, good side. They were pushing us with 10 men, to be fair. And we didn't need a fox in the box. What we needed were physical players on the pitch to go physical for physical, Alan. And uh, I think Cliff got it right yesterday. You look at who we brought on. Brings Barry on, brings Wallace on, brings Rawson on. Yeah. Well, yeah, all, all three know. players can can defend. That's the, the That's the why there. he did it. Yeah, that's Sorry, why. Alan, I talked over you there, mate. You know, I'd got no complaints with the players he brought on, but I think on another point, it might even be saving Johnson for Scunthorpe. I know it's going to be hard, and I know we're not going to sail through the game, but if ever you need a goal scorer to put a few goals in, you know, Johnson, he might just be the uh, the right fit on that day. 
Yeah, I don't see him starting at Forest Green. I definitely see it, you know, being um, a more a more physical side because they're a side, you know, that have, have got goals in them. Yes, they've had a bit of a stutter. They were way clear at the top of the league at one point. Now they're only four points clear um, at the top. So uh, I think it'll be. I think you think you're likely to see a, a physical Mansfield side. And do you know what? Don't be surprised if you see Wallace start. To be honest. And also, haven't they got, uh, is it one of the best right-backs in the league? Is he right-back for Forest Green Rovers? I know there's one of their players that they speak very highly of, and I feel sure it's the right-back. So if he gets forward, you know, we need to make sure we're concentrating on that left-hand side with Quinn, and that's probably where Barry could come in, just in front of Quinn. Yeah, it's Aikens. What we need to do is we need to stop them playing their game. We need to stop yeah. them having a, an easy time. We need to make it really rough and ready for them and you know whoever goes on Tuesday night fan wise just be singing from from start to, to finish make it really really difficult um, evening for them and uh, uh, stop them getting pop shots off because they like to shoot from the edge of the box they like to shoot from distance they like to sort of you know try and, and play quite quick we, we've got to we've got to be a little bit gitty really slow the game down and, and really get under their, their skin and I think that's where the likes of you know o, O'Toole's little bit of mischievousness and um, and uh, other players uh, like that will be, uh, yeah, will will be uh, key for us, Clive. I think so. I think you've got to, to. I mean, the club does its homework anyway. They know what they're up against, and they'll take into account the latest information about fitness. Um, but I've, when I've watched them on on the highlights, that they, they'd make a lot of their attacks down the left wing, um, much as we do. And so it's going to be an interesting mix, I think. Um, but I. I Whichever four we use at the back, and I think it has to be four, they're going to have to work hard. And I yeah. think it's who stands in front of them that's going to make the difference. So, <coughs> in fact, Maris, and to put your point, you could bring Wallace on, or he may even start with Wallace because he's very energetic. Do you know what? Thinking about it now, sorry to cut you off, you know, talking about trying to get James Perch back in there, because <laughs> if Perch is available, Perch is the first name on the team sheet. Just listen to the way Nigel Clough answers the question, and, you know, mm. uh, it, it tells you all you need to know. You know what isn't a bad shout? It's going with Perch at centre back, leaving Macker at left back, and moving JJ slightly forward into midfield and let him sit in the hole. Sit Which in front is something of the back he's always hole. wanted to do, apparently. Yeah, yeah. And he, and you know he's done it for us a couple of times, Alan. He's he's done it relatively well as well. Yeah, he's uh, he's <laughs> he's played well whenever whenever he's played, apart from his uh, little misdemeanour at Newport. But we'll forgive him for that now. He's back playing and playing so well, but. I must admit, I prefer him at the back. I know he can do a job in midfield, and if that's where he plays, you know, with trying to fit people in, that's fine. I haven't got a problem with that. But I just think he's got more... What's the word I'm after? Is more common sense is at the back, you know, where he can read the game that little bit better. Because I don't know whether they'd get at him in midfield, you know, with his temper. That yeah, possibly. I mean, for, for me, I, I don't think there's too much difference. I think... In terms of the way I'm envisaging it lining up, that back four of Hewitt, um, Perch, Hawkins, McLaughlin with O'Toole just in front. O'Toole would sit as the holding midfielder, allow Hewitt and McLaughlin to push on. And when they push on, O'Toole would drop back in and it would slot into a three. Yeah. Can I, can yeah. I just say, Craig, those people who are listening to this podcast rather than watching it can't see your fingers showing you where those players were going to be. Yeah, I, I'm fully aware of that. I'm fully aware that people aren't watching the live version and listening to it. But it's, you know, they can picture it in their heads. It's an audio medium, you know. They're used to having to trans... People who listen to this in, after five series and listen to me on the radio on a Saturday and a Tuesday are used to having to turn my voice and turn it into pictures. It's not always a good thing sometimes. Case it's, a, point, it's a privilege. It's an absolute privilege to hear you. No question case about it. It. Case in point, at full time yesterday on, on Saturday afternoon, Lee Wilson, my esteemed co-commentator, I said, we'll be hearing from him and we'll hear from Lee Wilson again on Tuesday night. He'll be back alongside me um, as we go to League Leaders, Forest Green Rovers, picks the mic up. No, I won't. I'm in Mar Barbados. So we have a bit of banter, banter about that. And at full time, I'll go, I'm sorry, Jason, I just can't get the picture of Lee Wilson in speedos out of my head. And that's putting it in everybody else's mind. And, you know, there have been a few people that have been a little bit sick. So I apologise profusely about that. But just going um, back on, on topic, it's... Uh, the, please uh, do, please. The, the thing is, for a good chunk of the early part of the season, we were desperately short of, of, of defenders. Now we're awash with them. and we're, we're thinking about putting them in different positions. It, it really is a strange uh, juxtaposition from where we were uh, in the dark days. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Forest Green have got the right idea, says Jim. It should be a miserable for away fans to discourage them coming. It's only what Clough wants to do here. It's what we did do here with the Exeter game and moving it to the uh, Friday night, if uh, we think back to that in a little in a little bit. Um, Roger says, I'm not so sure Johnson scored a variety of goals uh, for Orion. Yeah, he did. He, you know, he's, he's the type of player that, like, that scores in the box. You know, we had a bit of banter with Reese Oates the other week saying that he doesn't score tappings. Well, you know, that's the one thing we're missing from the game at the minute. I think that's what Johnson uh, can offer. Craig says, said it once and I'll keep saying it. Not We won't see Johnson on a pitch playing in a stag shirt again. Defo something behind closed doors, in my opinion. Uh, Richard says, for Forest Green Rovers, Matty Stevens is injured. Need to stop Kane Wilson, though. I agree, Johnson for Scunthorpe. Uh, and Craig says, uh, yeah, correct, Alan. It's Kane Wilson who plays uh, uh, right back and right wing back for uh, Forest Green Rovers. So definitely need to uh, uh, stop him. Um, Roger says, Clough might put Hawkins up front Tuesday uh, and surprise everyone. I don't think it would be too much of a surprise because if he puts him up front, it's putting Perch back in at centre-half, isn't it? And it solves his problem of uh, who it moves. Uh, Jim says, Forest Green are dangerous from out wide. Lock up the flanks. Uh, you often l uh, lock Forest Green up. I'd go 4-5-1 and ask the wide midfielders to uh, to double-team with the full-backs off the ball. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, uh, and Nathan asked a question. Uh, he hasn't left. He's still at the club. Um, he's just he just can't. He's just got a problem with his eyesight at the minute, which is why he's not uh, doing the interviews or the commentary. But he's still very much there, Nathan, and doing a splendid job as well. Um, right, let's go back to uh, more questions and more comments. You've got another couple of minutes if you want to get them in. Let's turn our attention um, to uh, podcast predictions. We won't look at Scunthorpe yet because, as Nigel Clough says, one game at a time, and we'll be doing another podcast before then anyway. Um, podcast predictions. Shock horror, Nathan hasn't uh, logged on to the link to... Uh, to give his reasoning why he scored no points on uh, Saturday afternoon. I'm just absolutely gutted that I went for uh, O'Toole rather than Hawkins to uh, to score. I knew a centre-back had score, but uh, I would have got more points. But there you go. Anyway, um, let's have a little quick look at the podcast predictions table. Ricky remains in 10th. Roger is in 9th on 26 points. Then it's Cam in 8th. Alan, you're above him by one whole point in 7th. Steve Naden is in 6th. Nick is in 5th. Steve is in 4th. And then it's all changed in the top 3. Clive's dropped down to 3rd. I've gone up to 2nd. And Nathan has a slender lead still at the top. He's on 51 points. I'm on 47. Time to get your Ooh. predictions in for all things Forest Green Rovers. Uh, Nathan's uh, not here. Cam's not here. So, Alan, let's start with you. I'm going to go with the double L on uh, Tuesday night. I'm going to go first Green Rovers 1, Mansfield Town 2, Ooh. and Lapsley and Longstaff. Oh, so, a 2-1 win with yep. George Lapsley and Matty Longstaff on the score sheet. Okay, I wonder where you were going that with double L. I'm thinking, we haven't lost. There you go. <laughs> uh, Clive, you're, you're next up. 1-0, Aikens. A good shout. Uh, I'm also going to go for a draw, and I'm going to go for a two-all draw, uh, and I'm going to go for, um, let's have a little think, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for Stephen Quinn to pop up, and I'm going to go for Lucas Aikens to get on the score sheet. Uh, Nathan's not here, Cam's not here, they'll drop us uh, their predictions before uh, Tuesday night. If you want to get involved with podcast predictions, then make sure you do. The link that you need is in the description. You've got to do it at one hour and uh, one, one minute, minute before kickoff on Tuesday night. Votes after that won't count. Votes in the comments and on social media won't count. It has to be done via the link. It's a simple... Yeah, that's all that. well and good, but what's Lapsley's favourite biscuit? Right. Do you know what? This is an interesting one. I knew, I'm frustrated at myself because I've interviewed him twice in the last couple of weeks, right? And the first time I interviewed him, I'm thinking, I've asked him. I'm sure I've asked him. I, I think you have, Craig. I can't remember who I've asked. <laughs> I, think, I think you've asked Lapsley. I can't remember what he said, but I think you've asked Lapsley yeah. somewhere along the line. They won't right. have remembered anyway. So. I've right. I've definitely asked John Joe O'Toole. I've definitely asked Nigel Clough. I've definitely Barry. asked Matty, Matty Longstaff and Jordan Barry and Ollie Clark. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure on the others. I don't remember you asking him to be honest, but yeah, I don't I'm remember much of my sure age. You've done I'm not, before I'm not... he got injured. Oh, but... When did he score? You can always ask him again. 
Do you know? You see, do you know I, what? I think I don't think it was Lapsley. I think you th I think it was Charlesley before he left because Charlesley really. came. No, no, because Charlesley came off the bench, didn't he, and scored? Yeah, uh, scored yeah, twice. Scored two, didn't he? In his yeah. last, in what proved to be his last game, and I think I asked him. Yeah. I'm not sure I've asked Lapsley. Right, somebody's got to do the research. I can't be asked. Somebody's <laughs> got to do the research and find out who I've asked the biscuit question to. Give me a list, and those who I haven't, I'll try and endeavour to do my best before the end of the season. I reckon Lapsley will have a much more sophisticated biscuit palate than the rest of them. And I I think I've got the answer. And it's Biscoff Creams. Look, you just wanted to get the Biscoff Creams out. Lot I'm on commission. <laughs> Biscoff Lotus Creams. Get them down here. <laughs> it's the future. I've got no words. I've got, I've got no words. Roger says, just ask Lapsley on Tuesday night if you get a chance. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. But if someone could do the research, that'd have be been greatly appreciated. Right, that's I almost... Think, sorry, yeah. I think you're coming at it the wrong way. What you should do, as soon as you start the interview, and say, before we start talking about football, fella, what's your favourite biscuit? That yeah. would be novel. Yeah, it would, but it also makes it all awkward for, like, the way that post-match interviews work and things like that. And I don't want them to forget. I mean, the footballers, I mean, you know... Not... Carry on as you're doing, Craig. Yeah, that, that yeah, exactly. Well, uh, by the way, just to... a quickie, have you been watching the series of Mo uh, Mansfield uh, Mastermind where the players are playing yes. against each other? Yeah, the one that was televised today, series. Murphy got 10 out of 10. Yeah, he was a smacker. He got Incredible. Seven... I, I am determined to do, I think we should do a, a mini fan series. I mean, I've already put it to Cluffy that Cluffy should take on the winner. He said no, uh, because he doesn't know. <laughs> Uh, this is this was sort of not word for word, but these were along these, the lines of what Clough said was, I don't know enough about modern things. I don't know enough about modern questions. Yeah. And it seems to be quite modern because of the football. So, you know, we, we should definitely have a, a mastermind where a fan takes on the winner. And I think we should also see a mini tournament between the management team, Clough versus Crosby, Garner versus the physio, um, <laughs> the analyst versus... The um, groundsman. The groundsman. Yeah, let's let's have a little, you know. Yeah. Let's, let's get it the groundsman's dog versus Bobby. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, who? I, the, the answer there is Bonio, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> for the favourite biscuit. We're, <laughs> these are two separate features that we're talking about, to be honest. Two absolutely separate yeah. features. And what Whilst about uh, what about at the live event, Alan's prize bingo? I should be delighted to be holding his balls for him again. I mean, what you do in your spare time whilst we're off air in the, in the green room is entirely up to you. But yes, there will be uh, a, a biscuit-themed game and a, a bingo as well. There, are, I think, but I do believe, I think I'm right in saying this, Alan, that there's going to be a biscuit hamper, isn't there, for one of the winners on uh, Wilson's bingo? Yes, definitely. For the line, two lines, and then the full house. All biscuit there hampers. There we go. Full-on oh, biscuit this. hampers. And you can attend this great event for free if you get your ticket before 745 on Tuesday and use the code Hawkins12 at checkout. The link you need is in the description. There'll be the biscuit game, um, the, the biscuit bing. That's that's it. Biscuit bingo. There'll be biscuit bingo, there'll be a quiz, there'll be some other entertainment, and of course, the main event. <coughs> Stag Stories Live, Stuart Watkiss, Neil Richardson, Andy Y, other guests to be announced as well. It takes place on Friday the 22nd of April at One Core Stadium. We really, really want you guys to, to get a ticket and to, to let us know you're coming. We really want to see you there. We've worked really, really hard on this and we're going to make it a fantastic event, getting everybody back together, recalling the glory from 20 years ago ahead of hopefully some glory this time around. 22nd of April, Stag Stories Live. Use the code HAWKINS12 to get yourself a free ticket. That's almost all we've got time for. Final thoughts, though, on Forest Green Rovers on Tuesday night. Everybody's going to be looking forward to it, but a difficult place to go. And I'll say this now, if we've, me and Clive have both predicted draws for this one. If we come away with a point, I'll be highly delighted. Yeah, so will I. I know I've gone for two one, but if we get a point, it's not the end of the world because we've got uh, we could uh, you know differentiate that on Saturday against Oldham. I know they're a decent. It's come thought, sorry. I know they're uh, you know they're fighting for their lives, but I do believe it's one that we can go and win and win handsomely. 
Absolutely. We'll talk more about that in the week as we reflect on all things Forest Green. My thanks to Alan Wilson. My thanks to Clive Parkin. Time to end in the usual way. And that's by looking back on Saturday's 1-0 win at home to Northampton. A 1-0 win which has made it very, very easy for you guys to attend Stag Stories Live for free by using the code HAWKINS12 at checkout. The link you need is in the description. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to hit play on this video. We'll see you next time. As the finishing line comes into the far distance picture, Mansfield Town are hoping to beat one of their promotion rivals here at One Call Stadium this afternoon and set a new club record for 11 consecutive home wins in the Football League. As you can hear, the fans have packed in. There is barely a spare, spare seat in the house and they are ready to try and cheer their side on to another three points here back on home soil. Nigel Clough makes three changes to the side, which drew 2-2 with Hartlepool United in midweek. James Perch misses out through illness. Jamie Murphy is out with a hamstring injury. And Jordan Bowery is dropped to the bench. In come Matty Longstaff, Reese Oates and Stephen McLaughlin, who captains the side. Matty Longstaff will deliver Mansfield's second corner of the game then here at uh, One Call Stadium. Up steps Longstaff, two-step run up into the post. Hawkins! And it's in! It's in! It's get in! The line. Get in! Mansfield Town have scored! It's Ollie Hawkins who swoops in and knocks in the opening goal of the game on 20 minutes. Mansfield Town 1, Northampton Town 0. Brilliant, brilliant delivery and Hawkins, I think one of the lads, I think I don't know if it were Quinn who got a block on his on his marker and left him with a free header. And it's a great header, you know, the keeper nearly got it tipped in, but, but that's all come from Mansfield play, keeping the ball, breaking the line and creating something. And that's what they can do. And it's a fantastic error from Hawkins and a great start from the Stags. Mansford have the ball back through John Joe O'Toole. That's an excellent switch of play Better. from the North former Cobblers man. Finds McLaughlin on the left, coming forward at a pace. Quinn on the envelope, low balling towards the middle, towards Oates. Turned away by Northampton. McLaughlin couldn't get the second ball. And O'Toole has to win it again on the halfway line. Longstaff tries to turn it around the corner. It finds Lapsley. Now Strike. McLaughlin, 35 from goal. McLaughlin yeah. hits it. And it's up and over the top of the bar, behind for a goal kick. But the intent there from Mansfield Town with five to go before the half-time whistle. Yeah. That's good, you know, we've got the second ball again, played it quick, you know, because they're supporting the, the spaces there and it opened up and, you know, got to hit the target, to be fair, but uh, that's where I like Mackie, you know, you see him there and he's going forward, he's, he's, he's one of the best, one of the best fullbacks going forward like that, he's brilliant, uh, and that's where we want him playing. Stephen Quinn drops off his shoulder and McLaughlin has done well to find Quinn, Quinn in possession, Oates tails off on the left, gets it to the edge of the area for Lockett, brilliant, turns, brilliant, oh! Oh, and it's a fantastic save from Liam Roberts at full stretch to palm the ball behind for a corner because oh. that strike from Matty Longstaff was going in the postage stamp. I'll tell you what, what a save that is. That is a great save. It's great play from Mansfield. Macca again up there, love it. Quinn interlocking, great ball into Longstaff. Lovely first touch out his feet and a curler. As soon as he hit it, I thought, that's in. Oh, got to get keeper credit. Longstaff will deliver again for Mansfield. Can he mix it up this time? Can he try and find far post? Hawkins stands on it. O'Toole over his shoulder. McLaughlin in there as well. Another two-step run-up from Matty Longstaff into the second of those two added on minutes. In comes the corner, and it's going to be football oh. towards goal. It's running loose inside the box. Reeks out! Oh! Keeper has stayed. It's and the line. Oh, fantastic just save. That. The keeper throws himself on the ground, and he gets a block on it with his leg, and it goes oh. behind for another corner. McLaughlin standing over this free kick for Mansfield. The Stags have left Elliot Hewitt back, but sent O'Toole and Hawkins both forward. McLaughlin steps up to deliver. It's a left-footed floater ball in towards the far post, where Hawkins does it down. Ball's running loose on the edge of the box for Stephen Quinn. Oh, it's deflected away. It might fall back for Longstaff. Deflected off the number seven. Behind me. the tenth corner. What have Mansfield got to do to put the ball in the net? Right, mate. The chance after chance. They've got to put one away. He's going to come back to bat us in the bomb if we don't. I'm telling you, you have to have to score. You know, we're on top so much. We've got to make it count. But it's good, you know. It's really good intent from us. A great start to second half. But we need that second goal. Longstaff then will deliver Mansfield's 10th corner of the game in front of the home fans where there's barely a spare seat in the Croydon end. Longstaff's balling towards the front post towards Hawkins. Flicks behind and it's corner number 11. 
Good from Molly Hawkins and Mansfield looking to maybe play this one short. Longstaff finds McLaughlin. McLaughlin with ball at feet, driving forward. He's got Quinn inside if you can find him. McLaughlin is oh. pushed up away by the keeper. It'll fall for O'Toole. Oh. Deflects away back to O'Toole. Who's oh. it again and he's deflected wide for a goal kick. Oh my God. Unbelievable. I tell you something, that's a great save from keeper again. How has he kept that out? It, he's kept it out, it's come back and... Ah, oh, block, block. Please, please don't let this come back and bite us because we have to put it to bed this game at the minute when you're creating this many opportunities, this many chances. Lapsley goes forward looking to try and get it forward to Lucas Aikens and that is a foul on George Lapsley by the Northampton man who has just pushed George Lapsley to the ground. The number eight, Paul Lewis, right in front of the referee and now he's got his decision to make. It's getting two yellows. It's two yellow cards. Two yellows. It's giving one for the foul and one for the push. Wow, Paul Lewis sent off for Northampton Town on 75 minutes yep. Northampton have taken it quickly as Ref, the short hits the box we've played a minute over long ball over the top again red by Stephen McLaughlin get it blown, Ref. to try and get the ball Sturt gets the foot to the ball Rawson steps in keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it and there That's is the full time over. whistle Maxfield Town still a huge huge three points Stephen Brilliant. Quinn jumps into the arms of Rizos on the bench the Stags fans in absolute jubilation and the full-time whistle blows with Mansfield Town well. gaining three points against a big promotion rival. So there you have it, Ollie Hawkins' eighth goal of the campaign gives Mansfield a big three points going into a big week of fixtures with Forest Green Rovers and Scunthorpe United to visit over the next couple of days. If you can't make either of those two games, make sure you tune into Mansfield 103.2 for full match commentary, edge of your seat, audio drive for you worthy of any BAFTA on the planet. Build up gets underway from 6 o'clock on Tuesday night. You'll have to tune in to find out who my guest commentator will be as Lee Wilson has decided to jet off to Barbados. I hope it brings me back some duty free. In the meantime, I'll do my utmost to try and get three points to uh, keep him smiling on the sunbed. As always, thanks for all your comments tonight and all your questions. Make sure you hit the link in the description and get your free ticket for Stags Stories Live. If you're an SSA member, all you need to do is use the code SSA2122 and show your SSA membership card on the door. Or if you get your ticket before Tuesday, 7.45 on Tuesday, and use the code Hawkins12, that will get your ticket for absolutely nothing. We've taken the cost off those tickets if you use the code Hawkins12 as a thanks to Ollie Hawkins for giving us that important goal over Northampton. Thanks as always for all your comments. As I say, thanks to the panel. Make sure you get involved with all the usual stuff in between. We will see you in the week for another Mansfield Matters podcast as we reflect on Forest Green and look ahead to the league's bottom side, Scunthorpe United, on Saturday afternoon. For now, though, that's the Sunday sermon. We'll see you again in the week. Come on, you stags, as the promotion charge continues.